Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to use the Photoshop Elements eyedropper tool right there. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and also subscribe. When you're subscribing, hit that bell icon as well so you get notifications of my new videos. And to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. The Photoshop Elements eyedropper tool is one of those basic little tools we don't really think about that much, but there are a few options in here that can really help you refine how this tool works. Let's just see where this comes from. What this tool does is it picks up color. See there it says Color Picker Tool. If I go up here to the Move Tool and then come down to the Color Picker right here and click on the foreground color, notice how that automatically chooses the eyedropper tool right there. So that's what this is about. It's about picking colors. Now, if I'm in the color picker over here, I can choose the color off of this area, of course, but if I move over my image, notice that I now have that eyedropper tool. Also, even if I'm on one file, if there's another file open in the background, I can choose a color off of that background image as well. So it's not just the one open image, it's any image that you can access when you're using the color picker. Now, you'll find this in a lot of different places as well, not just right down here. Let's say I had the text tool open, and I'll pull this over just a little bit here, get that out of the way. Right down here is a little color swatch, click on that, and notice that I have the eyedropper tool here. It's limited to this area, but I do have this tool available here. Other things also have this tool available to you, depends on what you're doing, but the swatches also use the eyedropper tool. Let's switch here to one of our layers right here. Right now this layer is a smart object layer, kind of a shape layer. I'm going to change this, I'll right click on the name, and then come down to simplify layer. This makes it just a regular graphic. Now, let's go over here to the eyedropper tool, choose that one, and then go up to the layer menu and come down to layer style, style settings, and take a look at stroke, and choose the stroke right there. And this brings up a little color box right here. Click on this, and there's our color picker again, and once again, there's the eyedropper tool for choosing colors. So you'll see that tool popping up in several different places. Let's now see how this tool works. I have some options down here, just two sets of options, not a whole lot on that one. The first one is the point sample right here. Either says nothing or three by three or five by five. That is showing how much of an area is being selected when you click on that. I have a little sample right up in here. Let me zoom in on this so you can see this. I'll just zoom way in. There we are, get way down here, down real close to the pixel level. There it is, it's as far in as I can go. And if we're working with this on the one pixel point sample right here, it would be choosing the color from just that one point right in there. So if I chose from here, I would get that orange. If I chose from here, I get the little bit darker orange. If I chose right here, I get that red. So you're only looking at just that one little area. This is the most accurate way to choose color. But let's say you wanted to choose the average green of an area like this. Notice how there's all kinds of different greens in here. Hard to say which one I would be getting if I was clicking through this, and it probably wouldn't be the average feel for that area. In that case, you want to have an averaging selection, and that's what the 3x3 and the 5x5 do. Only real difference here is that the 3x3 is less, and the 5x5 is more, and averages a larger area. Normally, I will choose between the point right here or the 5x5 average if I want an average. Let's choose that and click in here someplace, and I get a nice average green. Notice how they're staying pretty close together. If I'm just clicking around, they're pretty much the same. If I go to the point size here, again, watch that, and I click around. I'm going to be getting all kinds of different shades in there. They're kind of bouncing around. So having the 5x5 and average will give you a better average color of an area that you're working with. Also, if you're you know in tight like this, notice that we do have different colors. This is just that edge of that magenta circle right up there on top of the yellow circle. It's just that edge. And this is what you get when you zoom in real close. So if I was just clicking on that edge, I might get any one of those colors if I was using the point sample. But if I was using the average, I get a more accurate average color on that. So that's what those are about. Again, I use this one or I use this one most of the time. I really only use the three by three if the area I'm trying to select is right up against something else, like down in here someplace right down in there, and it's kind of a tight fit, 
In that case, I might go for the 3x3, just being able to come in a bit tighter on that. But that's it. So that's what that does. That's what these options here are. It allows you to take an average of pixels in a 5x5 or a 3x3 area. Okay, so now zoom back out on this one. There we go. Now you notice in here I have these overlapping colors and overlapping shapes. Right here there's a yellow circle that's in behind right there. Green one over here and a magenta one right up here, kind of sitting in front of everything else. Where the magenta overlaps onto the yellow, I have these two colors kind of blending together, giving me this red coloration. Let's go back to the eye tracker tool again, right there. And I'll go back to my point selection. We have two options here, all layers or current layer. If I click in here and it's all layers, I'll just do that. Notice how I get that red. Now, the reason why this is all layers to get that red is because this red is created by combining this layer and that layer together. So it takes both of those layers, this layer and this layer, to give us that red color. If I just change this to current layer right here, and I click in the exact same spot, what I get is that magenta because it's only giving me the color from this one layer right here. And again, we're using two layers on that to get that red, and I'm only working with the current layer. I'm only getting just the color from that one layer. Most of the time, what you want is the all layers, and this will give you the color that is visible to your eye in your working document. But sometimes it's useful to know that you can grab just the current layer, the color out of the current layer, and ignore any of these overlapping effects in there. So that's what that's all about right there. And there you go. That's how to use that eyedropper tool. Again, this is specifically about choosing colors. You can choose foreground or background color. And there's your foreground. There's the background. Brings up our color picker and it brings up that eyedropper tool right there. And then just choose what you want. When you choose a color, it's going to place that over here as the new color inside of the color picker. That's our background color. If you want to choose the foreground color, just click down here and then choose something. I'll just choose over here and you get a different color in there based upon where you're clicking. Choose OK and that then becomes that color area. So again, that's what that does. Eyedropper tool allows you to choose your colors for your foreground or your background and you can choose the sampling area and you can choose whether to sample from the current layer, which is your selected layer, or all layers, which give you the overlapping effects as well. So there you go. That's how to use the Photoshop Elements eyedropper tool. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, make sure you click on share and subscribe as well. And take a look at my complete course for Photoshop Elements. The link's right down there in the description. Okay, and I'll see you next time.